Hey there, hi there, ho there. It's Forever DM, bear to my friends and enemies. You can call me bear. You don't have to call me Forever DM, or Forever, or DM, or late for dinner. You can just call me bear. That was the way to go. So, I'm back. Yes, I know. I have a round table, uh, DMs of the round table coming up this evening, 8 p.m. There's going to be a special guest, barring any sudden last minute changes. Uh, and it's going to be talking all about superheroes, plus the new D&D stuff that just got dropped at D&D Direct. Some of that, we're going to talk about the campaign setting stuff. But, run D&D <laughs> with a little dragon up at the top. I love, I love that. Um, <clears throat> I want to make another character. Why? Well, I've got a play test going tomorrow. will not be televised. It's a private one with my regular group. We're going to really suss out the system. And unfortunately, one of the players for sure can't make it because he's moving. And another one of the players may not be able to make it. So that leaves me with three players. I've got four bosses for the end of Enter. Hydra. So I decided to make an NPC to run with them. So to do that, oh, and I also figured out how I can share Demiplane and the uh, the character sheet on the same thing in one uh, OBS. One, was it? OBS stands for One Broadcast Studio, I think is what it is. So OBS. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So basically, I, instead of sharing the applications, I'm sharing this display. I have three displays. So the middle display where I'm looking, I have stuff on the side, stuff on the side. This allows me to do that. And all I have to do is minimize this guy. And there's Demiplane. Bring him back and away we go. So that's going to help us a lot. So now that I'm going to be making a character, I have decided what I'm going to be making. Oop, that's the wrong one. Is that one. Devil Dog. Now if you've read Heroic 1 and 2, very proud. Heroic 1 I believe is a silver bestseller or Electrum, Electrum bestseller on um, drive through Comics. And number two, not so much. Uh, number one, really, people, you know, people wanted to support me, family, friends, all that. Number two, eh, they're bored of my stuff already, right? That's how it always works with your your, your social networks. You always have the diehards, but the other people only come out for one and then ignore you for two. C'est la vie, man. I don't get upset about these things. I take them in stride. Uh, but... If you've read uh, Heroic 1 and 2, you met Devil Dog, and you know a little bit about him, you know what kind of guy he is. Well, this is art by Oliver Castaneda. Oliver is amazing. Oliver is my go-to guy. He's literally the guy who sees the Zenith universe the way I see it in my head, so he always brings it to life quite well. Uh, this is the final page of uh, Heroic number 1. It's the best picture of Devil Dog I could squeeze out uh, on short notice. But the other reason I'm using Devil Dog and showing you art is this. Now, this is also by Oliver Castaneda. I don't know if you guys know who Ryan Robbins is. Ryan Robbins was in Arrow. Uh, he was in Warcraft and a bunch of other stuff, including some Canadian shows. And he's a friend. And when he saw Heroic 1 and 2, I was trying to convince him that he could totally play Grenadier, the Canadian hero, in a movie. But he really tweaked to Devil Dog. He liked Devil Dog a lot. So I had Oliver do a picture up of him as Devil Dog and send it along, and it was a big hit. So definitely for fun and for sure, we're going to be doing Devil Dog. So let's get down to it. Let's uh, let's waste no more time. So, code name, Devil Dog. Now, technically, he's Devil Dog 2 in the Zenith universe. There was a Golden Ager named Devil Dog, so we'll put that there, Devil Dog 2. Uh, occupation is, well, it's really hard to describe what his occupation is, so we'll just call him adventurer because it's sort of what he is and what he isn't uh, his real name is robert bob garrison his height uh he's not a big guy but he is a superhero so we'll say he's a six footer and leave it at that even though when i first designed him i saw him a bit smaller and squatter more like wolverine so why don't we do that let's let's play to our let's play to what we know we'll play him five it's not going to be Wolverine short because Wolverine's really short, but we'll make him 5'9". There we go. We'll make him 5'9". Uh, we'll wait. He's a thick guy. Works out hard. Uh, he's, you know, solid man. A little bit of a dad bod from a comic book point of view. So we'll give him a weight of, let's say, uh, 225. That works for me. His gender is extremely male. <laughs> Uh, his eyes, I never really thought about these things, so we'll give him green eyes because it's the rarest uh, color in the world. And I love that I can't even type the full word green, so I'll just put GRN. Uh, his skin is white. I mean, he's not really particularly tanned or pale. His hair is brown. 
brown. There we go. And his distinguishing feature is nothing. He has no distinguishing features. His base is Mobile USA because he's all over. His origin. Now, here's where we're going to have to go back over to here. So let's come over here. Let's go to the origins and take a look at what we get in the origins. And we'll close this little menu that oversees everything. We have alien, god, high tech, magic, mutant, special training, weird science. Well, he's a mix of high tech, but not really because he just uses guns. So we'll just call him special training, which is the same as Hawkeye. And he gets determination as a thing. So we're going to say his origin is special Mm, special training. I type badly. Uh, his profession was soldier, for sure. Uh, that's that's easy to see. And his size is average in game terms. <laughs> in game terms. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is his archetype. And we'll come back here. And we'll go look at the archetypes list and see what we have. I already know what it's going to be. Ooh. What's it going to be? It's probably going to be a blaster. But I just wanted to look at some other stuff. Protector. Striker. Eh. Let's go look at uh, blaster. Uh, bla blaster. B -b 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 blaster. Uh, fire. Matters using arrows, bullets, or optics. He's a blaster. I told you he was going to be a blaster. Um, so we're going to come over here, archetype, and we're going to put blaster. And we're going to make sure we put an L in there. And rank for this campaign is rank 10, not to be confused with the other thing, uh, with the, the Lady America at 15. So when we come here at rank 10, um, and we have to, now I think if I hold the alt, no. Is it the control key? No, that makes it bigger and smaller. Let's not do that. There used to be a way to... There it is. It's a shift. Hold down shift. I can scroll the image. So that makes my life a lot easier. So at rank 10, we're here. He has 40 health and 60 focus. And that's what I wanted to grab right now while I'm up here. So he has 40 health, 60 focus, and we'll get everything else done. I'm a little uncomfortable. So, ugh, and... The Queen of Fur is uh, sitting on my footrest again, as she is wont to do, so I'll have to turn a little bit sideways to raise my feet up. Hope nobody minds if I vape. As always, never weed, just nicotine. I stopped smoking weed a few years ago. Uh, though I might start again, because it, you know, I'm in a better place mentally now where it's not going to depress me. Damn it, there we are. So he has 3 die, 6, 14 fight damage. So 3 D6 plus 14 fight damage. He has 3D6 plus 25 range damage, which will be really good. 3D6 plus 25. And of course, that's going to change because we're going to add in his abilities after. So we've got that. We've got that. I forgot to mention he gets determination from his... Um, his profession, or from his or from his origin, his profession gives him a bunch of stuff too. So let's come back over here to backstories and traits, and let's come down until we get to soldier. Thank you, system. There we go. He gets battle ready, connections, military, and situational awareness. So he gets battle ready, connections military, and he gets situational awareness. Now let's go real back real fast and see what those give us. Battle ready, plus five focus, connections, blah, 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 and he gets edge on initiative checks. So now we can come back here and give him his plus five focus. Ba-bing, ba-bang, ba-boom. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm doing abilities last, even though I'm probably never going to put him above the caps because right now he's starting out as just a normal human being. Uh, I want to get everything else done first, and I don't really care about the caps. I want to get his power set done now, too. So the nice part about his powers is at level 10, he gets three power sets. Now, I don't see myself using all three power sets, and he gets 10 powers. So the first power set we're going to look at is going to be uh, <laughs> guns, 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 firearms. 
Uh, boo -ba -da -ba -ding, boo -ba -doom. So their thing goes up by six for agility and vigilance, which is nice. And they can add gr the greater of their agility or vigilance to their range damage with firearms powers. They also gain a pair of handguns. So that's nice. Uh, let's keep going down the list until we get to firearms. Uh, which is probably going to be, he's going to take firearms. And much like Lady America, I'm going to give him a tactical mastery. Because he is a tactician at the end of the day. So, we have ten powers to pick. Uh, other than tough, I'm going to see if there's anything else on the utility powers I want for him. I don't think there's going to be anything beyond tough. Tough for sure, because it's a good one for him to have. Heightened senses, no. Uh, inspiration. Yeah, the meaning in my life. Uh, no, that's heightened senses. Can I see inspiration, please? Thank you. Character inspires an ally with an earshot, gains edge on all checks. And start, yeah, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. He's got 10 powers to pick, right? Uh, actually, he's got 11, because I'm not taking all three of his power sets. So let's do guns and tactical mastery. Well, let's go add tough first. Let's do tough. Okay. So let's go straight to tough, which is right here. Power set none, special requisites none, action none, duration is permanent, and the effect gets... Character's focus is increased by their def ego defense. Beautiful. Okay, so first power he's going to get is tough. Hang in tough. The set is utility, because there is no real set. There is no cost. Uh, plus ego defense to focus. Duration is permanent. And it has an action of none. One power down, nine to go. So that's pretty good. Now I'm getting a bit faster at this, which is nice to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go close tough, and let's go look at those firearms powers again. So if we come into firearms, we see he has both guns blazing. Yep, definitely seen that. Bullet time. An enemy makes an attack against characters. Agility defense is the trigger. The enemy has trouble on the attack. That's cute. Um, slow motion gun shoot dodge. Character splits their attacks between two ranged attacks on an enemy or one ranged attack each at two different enemies. If an attack is a success, the enemy takes half ranged health piercing damage. If the attack is a fantastic success, the enemy takes ranged health piercing damage. We just said that, so I think they mean double. Oh no, regular. Just regular. It doesn't half, it's just regular. Until the character moves, is moved, or starts their next turn. All attacks against their agility defense have trouble. That's really good. The Marin makes an agility check and compares the agility against the defense of every enemy within 50 feet in line of sight. Any enemy the attack seeds against takes half range. self damage is The enemy takes full damage instead and is stunned for one round. Not bad. Bullet time. We already looked at. Enemy has trouble on the attack. Point blank parry. Character makes a ranged attack to the enemy who missed them. If the attack is a miss, the enemy takes... If the attack is a success, the enemy takes ranged physical piercing damage. If the attack is a fantastic success, they take double damage. Why is that called a point-blank parry? What's the trigger? Enemy with enemy misses. Oh, so it's a repost. Okay, it's not a parry, it's a repost. Hmm. Snap shooting? Ooh, what's that give us? Let's look at snap shooting. Character can make two range attacks at one enemy, so, or one range attack at two. Ba -ba -boom, ba -ba -bing. So it's this thing over here. Fast hands. No, it's not fast hands. It's this one, slow motion shoot dodge. But it's just not as good. Sniping. Uh, let's scroll down so we can see the whole thing. Character makes a range attack against the enemy. If the attack is success, the enemy takes regular damage. If the attack is a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage. Mm -hmm. How is that good? I don't know. I don't see where the deadly accuracy is coming in. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, so I like all the first level powers. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of his ten powers if I take all the first level ones. But, you know, those are pretty good. And he does get eleven powers, and that'll leave him four more to take. Well, no, because he already took one for the thing, so it'll leave him three more to take after that. And double tap stopping power... Oh, that's cute. All right, let's get the basics down. So we're going to give them both guns blazing. So we're going to give them both guns blazing. And that's from firearms. And we'll come back and fill all that in. I'm just going to get the basics down right now. We're giving them bullet time. Bullet time, bullet time, bullet time across the USA. 
Uh, and if you get that joke, you had a really awesome 90s. Uh, Point Blank Perry, I don't know. Let me look at it again. Let me look at it again. See what it does. Point Blank Perry. Oh, I can just do this and pop it up here. I'm dumb. Rank 5, reaction, uh, enemy within 10 feet misses an attack, character makes a ranged attack against the enemy, you miss them, if the attack is a success, the enemy takes ranged physical piercing damage, if the attack is a fantastic success, the enemy takes double damage. Eh, no, I don't like that one. Snap shooting I like, so we'll give him snap shooting. Uh, snap shooting, and that's under firearms. And then we're going to come back. I had music playing, but I had to stop. Sniping, I don't care for either. It doesn't. I don't see the benefit of it. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. You tell me why you should take sniping, because I don't see the benefit of it. It just looks like a basic old thing. Range attack against enemy. If the attack is success, enemy takes regular damage. If the attack is a fantastic success, enemy takes double damage. Isn't that how normal attacks work? Am I wrong? Uh, suppressive fire I want to see, though. Suppressive fire. The enemy character makes an agility versus ego attack at the enemy. If he ex oh, this is that Punisher thing. Oh, I like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Got a little excited. Suppressive fire. We're definitely going for that. Sir, suppressive fire. And that's under firearms. I, I spell suppressive right. S-U-P-P-R-E-S-I-V. I've been called a suppressive person. There's an extra S by a friend who was, well, no longer a friend, who was in a certain... Uh, religion that uh, uses that term for anybody who questions the religion. So I'm a suppressive type. Character makes ranged attack against an enemy within 10 feet. If the attack is a success, the enemy takes ranged physical damage, piercing. If the attack is a fantastic success, they take double damage. Okay, well, how is that a double tap? Character makes a ranged attack against an enemy within 10 feet. Oh, I guess in 10 feet there's a difficulty, maybe? I'll have to look up the range rules on that. But you know what? We'll give it to him. Why not? I'll figure it out later. And double tap. And that's from firearms. Now, before we continue with the firearms, let's go look at the tactics. Uh, the tactical powers again, because I forget what they are. Uh, focus fire, effect calls all enemy in line seven, seven characters rank, they gain edge on all action against, against that enemy. Uh, character inspires one more allies, they show the characters rank, inspired allies gain edge on all action, checks on the start of the next turn. That's pretty good. I like keep moving because it reminds me of, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, Space Mutiny. Move, move, move! No, you move, move, move! Don't tell me to move! <clears throat> but that's what that is. That's move, move, move. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Keep moving's good. I like keep moving a lot. So we're going to give him keep moving. Uh, keep on moving. And that's from Tack Mast. Um, so we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have four powers left to go. Um, no, the battle plan. Do I like the battle plan? Inspire character or more allies up to the character's rank. Inspired allies gain edge on all the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the benefit of it. I can see the benefit of it. Change of plans, I don't recall being something great. Uh, if the ally has trouble on an action check, one, so you're just getting rid of their trouble. Because you're giving them edge, which cancels the trouble. Hmm... Let me give him a battle plan and be done with it. Battle plan. And of course he'll grow and become a better tactician and leader as he gets uh, older and, you know, fights more bad guys and what have you. The rest of this stuff, I'm not going to fill out. And the reason I'm not going to fill it out is because I can just refer to the book or to Demiplane while playing, which will be a lot easier than looking on all this stuff. So I'm not going to fill all this out. I'm just going to write it in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have three powers left to pick. Let's go look at the higher tier firearms powers. Slow motion dodge was what? Character splits her attack to make two ranged attacks. 
Nah, not really a fan of that one. Point Blank Perry. I don't think I gave him Point Blank Perry. Did I? Did I give him Point Blank Perry? I don't think if I gave him that. Did I? No, I skipped Point Blank Perry, so I'd have to give him the tier one first. Uh, no, I really don't care about that. That doesn't really work for me. Suppressive Fire then led to Return Fire, which said what? Enemy declares an attack against the character. The character makes an agility ranged versus ego attack on the enemy. If the attack succeeds, the enemy takes half ranged focus piercing damage. Nice. It's a fantastic sense uh, success. And the enemy takes full ranged ooh, uh, focus. It's against their focus. Uh, so it's like a warning shot almost. Oh, I like that. So I'm definitely going to give him return fire. And that's from Firearms. That's pretty good, actually. I like that one a lot. That really looks nice. And then I gave him Double Tap. Let's look at Stomping Power and see what that does. Character makes a ranged attack at an enemy. If the attack is success, the enemy takes ranged physical piercing damage. If the attack is a fantastic success, they take double damage. If the attack dealt at least one point of damage to the enemy, the character may pay 10 focus to make another ranged attack against that enemy. That seems like it should be Double Tap to me. But that's okay. We'll give him stopping power as well. Which is from firearms. And that's 10 powers, but I have to give him one more, so we'll come down to the secondary power section. Uh, covering fire. Let's see what's... Uh, this, see, this is the kind of stuff he can be good at, is support, right, for the team. Is have him just blast, you know people in the face, he can be like, make them duck their heads and stuff like that. Character makes an agility range versus ego attack. If it's events that takes full range focus damage. Any attack damage apply. If the enemy suffers any actual focus damage, it is stunned. Uh, if the attack is a fantastic success, it also drops prone. Yep, we're going for covering fire. For sure. For shizzle. Covering fire. And that's from firearms. So that's one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, I lost my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's all eleven powers. We're good to go with that. Uh, next up, we got to look at the traits again. So let's go back to. Is it here where it's going to tell me how many I get for a rank? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be in an easy place to see? Yes, there it is. Ha 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 ha. You know, Misfit, I, I would love to put my feet up right now. It would make me so happy. No, no, you stay. You do you. So he gets four extra traits. Um, let's look at the list. Uh, there's no actual list. Let's scroll through. Alien Heritage. There we go. Uh, authority. Battle Ready. He already has that. Beguiling Berserker. Black Market Access. Ooh, yeah. He can get stuff on the black market. He knows where to get guns. Black Market Access. That's a good one for him to have. All right. Blind, Bloodthirsty, Clinician. Clueless, Combat Expert. No. Combat Finesse. No. Combat Reflexes. Yes. Definitely going to give him Combat Reflexes. Combat reflexes. All right, let's go back. Uh, I swear to God, I promise the next character I make won't be a fighter. It'll be someone that's different, I promise. But right now I'm making something that I want to run for tomorrow. Connections, military already has. Deaf dealmaker. <sighs> Sorry. Debate champ, dependence, determination. Uh, uh, Idyllic memory. Enduring Constitution, Enhanced Physique, Extra Career, Extraordinary Origin, Extreme Appearance, Enemy, Famous, Fearless, First Aid. Ooh. First Aid. I'm a dumbass. First Aid is good for him. And now I've lost. You're going to see I was listening to 80s music. See? 80s greatest hits. Uh, fresh Eyes. Gobble, God, Herge, Green Door, Heart of Hearing. HQ Heroic. 
that should do something like give them an extra edge or something. These ones here, the ones that are just, this is who you are. That should definitely, definitely, definitely have a mechanical aspect to it. Hunted, infamous interrogation. If you've read the comic, you know he's really bad at that, so I'm not going to give it to him. Uh, Krakoan, leader, again, should definitely have an advantage to it. Uh, linguist, loner. He works with a team. Massive, mentor. Mute, obligation. Prescription pad. How about dad bod? That'd be awesome. Piloting. Oh yeah, that's right. He does know how to pilot. Uh, let's see if there's anything else, but otherwise I'm giving him piloting. Technically, has a secret identity, but everybody has a secret identity. I think this needs to go, and public identity needs to exist only. Like, it's default. You either have a public identity or you have a secret identity. Not everyone should. It shouldn't be a trait. Uh, signature weapon. No. He already has situational awareness. Sneaky. Uh, yeah, that could work. Uh, tech Reliance. I actually like that. I'm not going to give it to him, but I like that a lot. It's great for an Iron Man type character. Um, yeah. What one did I say? Piling. Sorry, I want coffee. I've been up since, what, five this morning? Yeah, yeah. It's the way the day goes. It's the middle of the day. So there we go. We've done all of his traits. We've done all of his other stuff. We've done all of his powers. So the only thing left to do is his abilities. Now, at his um, rank, let's go look at creating character... Do we see the abilities? Yes, here we go. Rank 10. He has 23 points of abilities. Let's see if I can not screw this up like I did with her. So his might is going to be 3. Well, okay. Let's 3. His agility, he can go up to 8 or higher. We're going to give him a 6 agility. So he's at 9, which leaves him with uh, 14 points. Yes, 14 points. His resilience will be four. He's down to ten points. His vigilance will be four. He's down to six points. His ego will be two. And his logic will be two. So that's two. Then he has four points left. Okay. We're definitely going to put the resilience up to five. The vigilance up to five. And we'll put ego at three and logic at three. So that's three, nine, fourteen, nineteen. 22, see, I suck at math. 22, 25. I got to trim two points out of here. So let's take that down to a four. And let's take that down to a two. So now we got three, nine, 14, 18, 20, 23. Yay, me. All right, now we're going to do the thing I hate the most, which is we're going to go back to the archetypes. And we're going to go, well, that didn't work because we're in the building character. We want to go out of there. We want to go archetypes there. Thank you very much. And we're going to look for, I said he's a blaster. Well, there it is. Blaster. Uh, I did, just to confirm, he is a blaster. Okay, so now we're going to figure out some other stuff. So at rank 10, his agility is plus 7 and 15. So this is 7. This is 15. So that's going to make that an 18 and that's going to make that a 10 and then his agility is 9 and 20 so this is a 9 which makes this 15 and this is a 20 which makes this 26 paying attention i'm paying attention now his resilience at 10 is 4 and 15 so 4 15 so that makes this a 9 and this a uh, 20. His vigilance is 7 and 18. So that's a 7, which makes this an 11. And that's an 18, which makes this a 22. 
Uh, his ego is 7 and 18, and his logic is 7 and 18. So there are 7 and 18s right down the board there. 7, 7, 18, and 18. So that makes this a 9, and this a 10. This is a 20, and this is a 21. So we're pretty good. Fight damage is plus might, so that's going to be plus 3. And that's going to be plus agility, which makes another plus six. Okay, slowly getting this. Now, we got to figure, calculate a couple of other things. we got to calculate... Can I have that back? Thank you. I actually want that now. Uh, other scores. Here we go. Multiply their resilience by their rank and add that to their total health. So his resilience is five. Add, so he adds another 50. So that's going to make him have a 90 health, which is pretty grievalicious. Focus is multiply Vigilance by their rank, and that's going to work out for them there. So Vigilance is 4, so it's another 40 points. He's got 105 points of Focus. That's not bad. Karma is half their rank rounded up, so he's ranked 10. He gets 5 total Karma. Uh, initiative modifier is the higher of Agility or Vigilance, and his... Agility is clearly the higher, so his agility modifier is 6. And... Do, 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 do. Fight damage range and size is done. Where's speed? I want speed. What's the speed? There it is. That's it. To 25 feet, add their agility and modify for their size uh, if it's something other than average. So he gets 25 plus his agility, so that puts him at 31. He gets half of that. Round to the nearest hole, so 15 for swim, 15 for climb. Am I missing anything? No, I'm not. Okay, beautiful. Let's go ahead and save him. File, save as. Uh, we're going to put it in my special folder for all my stuffs. And we use, use the Lady America, but we're going to call it Devil Dog rank 10 and no peeking there's an n in rank that i use for the shorthand yes you're going to see some interesting stuff in that folder i'm sure if you took the time to look uh you can always go back pause the image doesn't matter okay so there you go so what have we learned well uh clearly it was a lot faster the second time around because i was getting more comfortable with it which is how character creation should be someone asked me what i liked about the game why i like it um this Everything I just did is what I like about it. It's just crunchy enough that character creation feels like something. I don't, I still don't care for power sets, and I think rank is over intrusive. I think ability caps should have a place on the character sheet, but that's just me. Uh, but overall, and like I said, there's little minor things, right? But I like the traits. If they made them more robust and, you know, used them more like talents in the old phase rip, that would make me a lot happier. Or feats in a D&D &D game, that would be really cool. Uh, I like the powers. I just want more. And I think power sets are interesting, but I think maybe there should be a way... Like, you should you should form a power set as a theme and get a bonus for doing that. Like, it costs less, or you get an extra power or something. Or you can just take a la carte and build the character you want. That would be a lot more interesting to me. The rank stuff, it's okay. The modifiers are too high. They need to come down, and then that way people won't be as terrifying. But I, I don't hate it. Uh, I'm getting the hang of it, slowly but surely. Tomorrow I'll get to try it and play and see what happens. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, though, if you're looking at 3D6 plus 25 plus 6, I think you've made a mistake in your design philosophy, but that's just me. Uh, so obviously health could come down, focus could come down, and then damage could come down, and we could keep it into my st nice tighter numbers. Uh, it's one of the things I admired about Bash, was the way Bash kept the numbers really tight and focused. Uh, when I was doing a point build idea for a game, I was like, well, you'll have 200 points. And then I realized, you know what, just divide everything by 10. If something costs 10 points for character creation, why don't I just make it cost one point? And then that way, I lost a little bit of granularity, but I made up for it with simpler numbers and smaller numbers. And it wasn't quite as <clears throat> jaw-dropping. So that's it. That's that's my second character. That's Devil Dog, and I think that went really well. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how he plays tomorrow in the playtest and have him pop, 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 popping off his shots at the Hydragoons. And then the surprise bosses. Ooh. But yeah, what did you think? 
What do you think? How do you, now you've seen me make two characters, well, two and a half characters. We'll forget the Roll20 incident. Um, what, what do you think? You liking it? You, you're getting a little more interested? You're getting more curious? I like the fact you guys ask me questions in the comments. I like the fact that we're having a conversation. I like the fact that we're building a community because that's what this game needs right now. If it's going to become something we're all going to want to play is the playtest community has to stand together, be professional, be positive, and be constructive in our criticism. Not just me, not me. Look, I could play Phase Rip for the rest of my life. Not Phase Rip the clone, I mean Marvel superheroes. I could play that until the cows come home. But I want to see how this plays, because I always like the idea of looking for a game that inspires me. And so far, I can really see the potential in this. I see ways I would do it differently, and I think you do too. There's ways you would do it differently. But I like what I'm seeing. It looks fun, and I want to see how it plays. So until later tonight when we do the live uh, DMs of the roundtable, I am the forever DM, bear to my friends and enemies, Andrew Collis, a horse by another color, uh, or a bear of another color, hmm. <laughs> saying peace, love, geek, and uh, Avengers Assemble.